This video is brought to you by Freshly Fermented. Check out our brand new vegan monthly subscription box in the link in the description. Honey, you'll never guess what I found. What is it, darling? It's the best thing ever, and this could possibly shape the future health drink industry. My, my God, Frank, what, what is it? So I left this jar of tea that I've been drinking on my desk for like two weeks. Frank, just listen, darling. So I left this tea for two weeks, and now look, it's grown a slimy disc. And do you know what the best part is? The tea tastes delicious. And I feel amazing. I feel like I could, I could take over the world all on my own. Frank, I want a divorce. It was 220 BC and the Han Dynasty in China was in full swing. When out of the blue came a new popular medicinal drink that was sweeping across Northern China, nicknamed the Elixir of Life. You could find this drink everywhere. Markets, they got it. Pharmacies, they got it. Your grandma's house? Oh, she got it. I mean, this thing was everywhere. It was nicknamed the elixir of life because it was firmly believed that it could cure tons of ailments, which of course is one of the reasons it spread around China in the first place. Diarrhea, gone. Gut issues, gone. My dad, gone. This thing could get rid of anything. And one day, a Korean doctor named Dr. Kombu managed to get a hold of this drink and started treating all of his patients with it. And if you couldn't tell by the name, this guy was pretty about the stuff. One day, Dr. Kombu heard about a Japanese emperor who was very ill. So he set on his merry way to go and heal the sick emperor. While on his travels, he was crossed by a mythical ninja who could travel through time and informed Dr. Kombu that he was from the future and only he could save the world from total annihilation. What? Well, excuse me for trying to spice up the story a bit. Once Dr. Kombu reached the emperor, he poured him a glass of kombucha and presumably asked him to drink it. And a few days later, the emperor was A-OK. -okay. After he was healed, the emperor entered the room that Dr. Kombu was staying in and said to the doctor, my fine man, how did you manage to make such a beautiful glass of fermented tea? It is by far the best thing I have ever drank. And I would love to get myself one of these beautiful scobies. So the doctor replied, why my fine emperor? I got it at freshlyfermented.co.uk. Yes, that's right. You can get your own kombucha scoby at freshlyfermented.co.uk. But that's not everything. We also sell starter cultures for yogurts, sourdoughs, kefir, and many more. That's why Freshly Fermented has the largest range of fermented starter cultures in Europe. And I also heard that you like discount codes as well. Yes, that's right. I know who you are. Well, if you use the discount code WEBSITE10, you can get 10% off your starter cultures. And I also heard you might be vegan. Well, if you are, you should go and have a look at our monthly box full of vegan snacks that we deliver to your door every month called the Holista Box. And if you use the code HB10, you can get 10% off your first box. So what are you waiting for? You can head over to the freshly fermented website by using the link in the description below. Anyway, Let's head back to Japan. After the emperor was healed, he supposedly named the drink after the doctor and cha, which is Japanese for tea. And just like that, kombucha was formed. Kind of, but there's a bit of speculation here. As kombu translates to seaweed, the original main ingredient, and tea, which of course in Japanese means cha, this might mean that Dr. Kombu isn't real. This also might mean that the emperor is not real. And if they're not real, maybe I'm not real. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. After this, kombucha started spreading all over Europe. Most noticeably, the big crazy bear wrestling country of Russia. Hey Vlad, look at what some Japanese guy just gave me. What is it? It's called kombucha. Kombucha, eh? Oh wow, this drink might be better than kvass and potatoes combined. I know, and if you keep it alive, it lasts forever. Forever, you say. Well, I... Hey, hey! What do you think you're doing? Don't you run. Get back here! The story then goes to 100% non-fiction, as we actually have recorded history on this. During World War I, kombucha was shared between German and Russian prisoners of war, meaning that Germany went kombucha mad. Hey, Gunther! I am back from the war, and look what I have brought with me. Trench foot? What? No, no, this. Mold in a jar. No, this is kombucha, fermented tea drink that a Russian guy taught me to make. 
So it's fermented tea. Yes. Which has formed a layer of controlled mold on the top of it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. So it's mold in a jar. You want to know something, Gunter? You're a real ass. After kombucha gained popularity, it was being consumed in all countries around Europe and nothing was going to stop that. Kombucha was placed firmly in history and nothing was going to change that. It... What's that noise? Oh, for the love of God. World War II came around, easily one of the most tarnished times in humanity's history, which led to a number of economical issues all over the world. One of which being supply shortages of both tea and sugar. And what do you know, those are the two main ingredients for kombucha, meaning that the world literally ran out of kombucha. Kombucha's history goes pretty dark after that. There was a Swiss report that talked about kombucha slightly, but after that, it was nothing. Finding any evidence of kombucha was hard from then on. We think that Russian babushkas may have still been making it, but some of them live such concealed lives, who knows? Kombucha was gone, and who knows when it would ever be back. Is that? Oh dear God, no. Not America. Anything but America. No, please no. Ah yes, America. The home of overpriced coffee chains, hip hop, and the 14th highest rating of obese males in one country. We salute you, America. America has started the trend back up again. And it's all thanks to this very perfectly structured man, which if you live in America, you may know him, but for the people who don't, this man is called George Thomas Dave, who is otherwise known as GT Dave. Say hi, GT Dave. He, he's not actually here. I did ask if GT would like to be in my video and he very politely and respectfully ignored my email. Anyway, in 1995, GT's mother was very ill with a severe case of breast cancer and was given a very low life expectancy. However, the doctor did notice something while examining her. The cancer cells were receding. The doctor asked her what she could have been doing to cause this. GT's mother claimed that the only thing she was doing is drinking something called kombucha on a regular basis. To which the doctor said, whatever you are doing, keep doing it. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Is this sexy voiced British guy claiming that kombucha can cure cancer? No, I'm not. This is a story of how GT Dave managed to start his world famous kombucha brand. I'm not making this up. I am repeating an anecdote. So take that advertising and trading standards. And that's it. This is where the modern day kombucha brands have come from. And this is also why this video is a thing. But just to think, if that maybe fictional doctor never gave that maybe fictional emperor that life saving kombucha, who knows what would have happened? Probably the same thing as they were both probably fictional.